This is an artist called Gagindanath Tagore. Gagindanath Tagore was the nephew of Rabindranath Tagore. So he was one of the pioneers of Indian art. He was one of the first to take from the rest of the world, absorb it. He was one of the first great social satirists. He was one of the first great artists who sort of commented on certain hypocrisies and double standards of India when no one else was sort of taking that through art. So basically we are then showing the Himalayas and open up this vast world. Okay, and the great photographs from um, these were taken at the highest level, 28,000 feet, where a photographer had gone at that stage. This is the Badrinath cave, and these are the great R. R. Bhardwaj, one of the great pioneering pictorialists of photography. Now, I assume photography also you're not taught? All right. Um, do any of you know what those temples are? No? Any of you been to Kashmir? Konsa temple eh? Matan. It's one of the great sun temples of India. Any of you? Well, this is Nicholas Rorick. Nicholas Rorick was a great Russian thinker, peace activist, artist, philosopher, explorer, writer. And he came to India and he discovered for the Russians and for his own journey the Himalayas and the great grandeur of the colour that the light would bring at different stages of exploring the Himalayas. Swaminathan, the mountain bird tree series, one of India's great artists and colorists. Let's move forward and let's come here. You see this wall? This wall is trying to show in glimpses the relationship between animals humans, nature, and the cosmos. So, it's one of the research categories in one's India Studies framework. And over here, now all of you, any of you been to Ranthambor? Who's been to Ranthambor? Tell me, do you know what this is? What is this? No, it's actually something representing a tiger. If it was a tiger, we wouldn't be here, I don't think. What's the medium? What does it look like to you? Okay, who says it looks like a photograph? You all said, put your hands up. Photograph, who says? Put your hands up, you guys. Come on, let me see. Okay. Who thinks it's something else? A sketch, maybe. A sketch? How do you think this sketch is made? Charcoal. Okay, and how? Okay. These were the people who looked after the titles. They were the Rantham, um, Ranthambo School of Artists that was set up. The Ranthambo School of Artists looked after the tigers. Because of their proximity to the tigers, they slowly started painting and drawing the tiger. And they use here the soot, which you get from the exhaust of a car. You put it on a newspaper. You fold your newspaper nine times. When you fold a newspaper nine times, you get a tip, which is as perfect as any pen. And from that newspaper tip, they made these drawings. Okay, obviously they have a photograph to look at, but the energy and this is that same artist there who did your Jamni Roy uh, Christ, the little Jamni Roy. So here we are showing different forms of animals. My favorite, I have a sanctuary for abandoned and injured dogs and cats. And so for me, the way the humans are treating the dogs is a disgrace. And I hope you as younger people will have a bit more empathy and will hopefully take to task those who show cruelty against the dogs, especially the stray dogs, who are the most 
beautiful, honest, decent, loyal and loving creatures in the world. Please understand, just in case you didn't believe me, this is an image of Datta Tweya, who was once the Trinity God of Pashupati. And the four dogs here represent the four Vedas. So the dogs were given the highest respect all throughout our history. The only companion Yudhishthir chose was a dog to the gates of heaven. A dog will never, I'm putting in my two pennies on animal welfare, excuse me. A dog will never, never bite you unless it is worried about its children being attacked or you are attacking it. You've got more chance of the human next to you biting you than a dog ever biting you. Here you got the explanation, oh sorry. So one of the great artists that has shown the empathy of the dog is Shomnath Hall. Shomnath Hall is another great artist. Here you have seen how from drawings, sculptures are evolved. Here is one of India's greatest international artists and teachers. He was the head of the New York um, School of Art and Printmaking, Krishna Reddy. And he created in the 50s a very unique intaglio process which brought in multiple viscosity processes so that you would have multiple colors move in a very organic way. So all the forms he was trying to express in the 50s were these great organic forms. This is a spider's web, jellyfish, whirlwind, wave, blossoms, tree trunk, germination, all these kind of ideas. Then you've got another great artist who used the folk traditions of India to show his art, Jyoti Bhatt. This is a Hira Jubilee Trophy. I had no way to put it, so I put it here because it's that. And Munas Swami was one of the great artists of Chola Mandal, though he was never allowed in Chola Mandal because he had problems with his head panika. But this is his version of animal. And here is India's finest artist who took the folk and tribal traditions and inspired his art. Over here, all of you, these are the prize which will change the educational system of India. That is the film booklet. In the film booklet are the original credits, the storylines, the lyrics, the, um, all the cover images, what's the next feature. Without this booklet, you cannot really teach the history of film and you can't teach the history of many related subjects. And therefore, this was the prize part of our collection. This is a little drop. We've now collected nearly 88, 89% of all films ever made. So um, this will one day, very shortly, you'll see how this is helping you understand your subject. Turn around and you will see a small sample of the archive of India's most celebrated international filmmaker, not just then, but even now. No one really liked Satyajit Ray, and it wasn't just for the sake of name. He truly was a great Renaissance polymathic mind. He was a graphic designer also. <coughs> he was a book illustrator. This is his book illustration for children for Bengali script. He was a writer, he was a filmmaker, cinematographer, he loved music. There was a great, he had a great relationship with Ravi Shankar. And when they parted, Ravi Shankar was asked, how was Satyajit Ray as a musician? He was okay. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. because he would interfere, he was tell Ravi Shankar, I say, I say, so obviously, what do you so here are some samples of part of the archive, original letters by him, documents, all kinds of different archives which will be accessible to all of you in a few months. So, as I said,
understanding different facets of India, whether it's the way to understand her through pilgrimage, whether it's the concept of an orientalism, where the Westerner wants to see India, whether it's going to an architectural heritage. So that's the change that has to be brought about. And then we come to the greatest energy of India in her creative world, and that is of cinema. So in cinema, yeah, there's millions and millions of objects in the, um, in the world on this subject. We have you know, probably the greatest that we've seen. We can only give a few samples. And the way we decided, we just gave one introductory wall. We put one photograph, the first photograph of Watson's Hotel, where the first film was shown by the Lumia brothers when they came to India. And remember, cinema was introduced to India barely five months after it was launched in Paris. So India was always in par with the development of cinema. We never gave it that kind of documentary um, support. We never gave it that intellectual support, educational support, material support. And then as it slowly became a source of entertainment, it was very difficult then to change certain parts. But I'll show you a much deeper. So you've got someone like Ahiman Shurai. Many great entrepreneurs came up. The Madans, the Prabhat Studios, Imperial Studios, New Theatres. Um, and he gave rise to Bombay Talkies. Then we are just trying to show one, one film of the period of the 50s, which was the transformation period of India from a Neador to Avara to Jansi Kirani, one focusing on the divide between rural India and urban India, one focusing as much on the greed of urban India and the imaginative world, one focusing on the past and our struggle to become India and the kind of epic proportions. And then we use the example of one classic film, Pakiza, and different art forms in the material. And, you know, like this, this is the Golden Jubilee Trophy of Pakiza. The world probably has not seen this for about 50 years. Because, you know, it's, it's lost to humanity in a way. It's not in museums, it's not in anywhere. Now, the kind of craftsmanship that goes into this, again, that's been lost. So, if you see the trophies today, you have here, and these are some of the great trophies, whether it's Bobby, whether it's Yadoki Bharat, whether it was an icon for RK Studios, whether it's over there, some of Amita Bachchan trophies. The craftsmanship, the craftsmanship in those trophies reflect what is the nature of artisan policy? How are we respecting our crafts? How are we respecting those artistic lives which are not making very much money, which seem to be not so relevant, but unless you nurture that, you lose a very important part of India. So, and India has had more artisans than any other country in the world. So nurturing the craftsmanship, whether it's in cinema, whether it's in rural India, whether, look at behind you, the little Buddha made from jute. Now that kind of Buddha, look at the Buddhgaya sandal would work. Look at the small Sanchi stupa. That kind of craftsmanship is gone now. Even if you want to bring it back, you can't because the families have been destroyed, they've not been nurtured, they've gone to the urban centres, they've lost their livelihood, their sense of community. So all of these questions get taken up. Now, over here is a section with the actual artworks which made the publicity of cinema. People only think of cinema that you watch a film. That is why one of the biggest problems in India was that we had this great love for cinema, but we didn't have a great cinematic culture. So a country like France, can claim a great cinematic culture because it wasn't just watching the film. It was everything around the film, the art of the film, the criticism of the film, the discussion, the filmmaking processes, relationships to the rest of the world, taken from literature, taken from other sources of drama, poetry. All the arts are working together to create a culture. 
that cultural framework for cinema never got created deeply enough because then the box office took over. And so, apart from the great artwork, look at this Ganga Jamna. This is the original hoarding of Ganga Jamna when it was released in Jamna Sinmain Tadio. Now, you know, the quality of these things are gone forever. And you can see there, Mangal Pandey is the last artwork. And obviously that has a certain energy also. But this world is now gone forever. It will never come back. And then we come to another facet of Indian cinema, which was in a way the Jubilee. The concept of the Jubilee. Whether it was through a trophy, whether it was through awards of throwing a Jubilee party. We've got beautiful albums on, let's say, Janji's 50th Golden Jubilee. There was a party at Sun and Sand. So Prakash Mehra had, first of all, the 50th Jubilee of Janji. And he also launched Hera Peri, his next movie. He also launched Himalaya Kigodme, or Himalaya Se Ucha, I can't remember now. And those documents are important guidelines for mapping out histories of the box office. Now, I have purposely compared here two different worlds, the Jubilee Trophy and the Film Festival Catalogue Cover, because they're two different worlds that look at cinema very differently. One looked at cinema as an art form, one looked at cinema as an entertainment form first and foremost, and a source of box office receipt. Both of these have existed in India. Both of them have created. So with the art of cinema that goes into the publicity of a film, the concept of the jubilee and the box office of a film, and the film festivals which nurtured and promoted the artistic or what we used to call parallel cinema, from the Satyajit Rays to the Ritik Gataks to the Minal Sens, Sham Benegas, Adur Gopalakrishnans, all of them who saw Mani Kaul, uh, Kumar Shani, who saw cinema first as an art form, then as a source of entertainment. And then the greatest um, actor, superstar of Indian cinema as an example. So you see an Amar Akbar Anthony, La Vares, Namakalal, Divar. Now, they have their own energy. It resonates with our people. You've got two great icons for RK Studios. Even greater tradition. So, this together, here's another one, Ram Tevi Ganga Meli. So, with the Jubilee concept, with the film festival concept, with the arts of cinema, you have, for the first time, you know, trying to put together how a culture gets developed. And then we come to our curiosity cabinets. But before we come to the curiosity cabinets, we come to this framework here. And this is at the heart of our archive. And I'm not privileged it in this, or, um, this exhibition. And that is the world of cinema. Not just Indian cinema, but the way the world of cinema um, and its archives, its scholarship, its documents got created. So whether you start from Thomas Edison to the greatest probably cinematic figure in the world, Charlie Chaplin, to the birth of comedy in Hollywood, so from a Buster Keaton to a Keystone Corpse, to different facets of comedy. So from the 1900s, 1910s, you then come to the great period where German Expressionism was a very important part of world cinema. Because as many great German film directors started leaving Germany because of the changes in the political climate with Hitler coming to power, Hitler then changing the nature of creative freedoms. So great film directors like Fritz Lang, Joseph von Sternberg, Eric von Stronheim, F.W. Mono, uh, Sisberg, various came to Hollywood and gave Hollywood an absolutely unique flavor. And that scholarship is what we have one of the greatest archives in the world on. And that will be part of the next exhibition where we will 
privilege this world. So you can see here, these are the original handbills of Hollywood films released in India, released in the Indian theatres. At that time, Capital Cinema was a big cinema. There were many other, Wellington, there were uh, various films. And then came Regal, Eros, Metro, New Empire, and Liberty, finally, on the year of independence. So this finishes one part with the curiosity. The curiosity cabinets are very important parts of any great ex exhibition. It puts very unique little bits and bobs for you to discover for yourself. It's, it's like a child going into a dollhouse and finding beautiful things and playing with them and just having fun. And yet they could be very rare and unique items. So you got here the original uh, booklets on Mughalism and Gone with the Wind. The first postcards of Ravi Varma uh, paintings. Um, various things on how Mughalism showed itself. Cinematic chemistry. Raj Kapoor, Nargis albums. The first postcards of Hollywood. Um, small little things where in Chori Chori. Cinematic chemistry. Various bits and bobs. So that's for the public to find and explore themselves. All right, you've got enough for that section now. Too much on cinema. I'm not saying no to that, but the point is the merger of cinema with the other arts. At the end of the day, cinema carries, because of the public interest in cinema, you have to then carry other disciplines which don't have the same interest. Okay, so that's the main objective here, that cinema gives an energy so that the fine arts gets integrated, the popular arts, architecture, photography, all of these get a certain role and importance which otherwise they would not get. Okay? So one important part of our research um, framework for India studies is the animal-human-nature-cosmic continuum. That there is this underlying thread which unites all living souls. Whether it's an animal, whether it's a human species, whether it's the nature of all our flora, fauna, nature, or whether it's the stars and the planets and the cosmos. All of this has a logic and a continuous relationship which doesn't get broken. We may try to dominate one, privilege one, break down one, but at the end of the day, when we understand that linkage, we are much more in harmony so, one part of this exhibition is the relationship between the fine arts and how they've expressed animals and human nature relationship with animals and nature. So, from the great, you know, this is one great example in Ranthambore. Now, in Ranthambore is one of the few places in India where both na nature reserves animal reserves and architectural reserves are tackled together. There's no other place really that has that synergy. So Rantambor, and there's a group of artists who lived and protected the art tiger, who then became artists because they understood this is pencil drawing. How? From charcoal. They take charcoal from the soot of a car from the exhaust pipe, they take a newspaper, fold it nine times, and from the tip of the newspaper, the drawings are made. So that's the quality of the drawing. Obviously, there's a photograph from which they use, but this, that again comes back to the craftsmanship of India, that there are thousands and thousands of fine creative people across our country who don't get the support they need to develop. Then this was just to put perspective that the cat, Jamni Roy's cat. Then the whole concept of Dattatriya, one of the, um, once upon a time, the god of Pashupati. And it needs to be revived because people, the way they're treating the stray animals today, the dogs and the cats, is absolutely shameful. 
It's the sign when the human being reaches their lowest level of gatiyapan, that they can't look after the most helpless, the most honest, the most decent and loving of creatures. And the dog has been the oldest companion of human beings. Judista only took a dog. When you, this is the depiction of Dattatriya. Who are the four dogs? They are the four Vedas. So from the time of ancient Hindu philosophy, the dog has been respected. And today we have people killing dogs, beating dogs on the street. It's their home. Now, how do you get across that understanding? Ki, uh, look, you can't force people to love. You can only open their mind and give them opportunities to learn. So, art has... Shomnath Hall was one of the great artists who depicted the dog in many forms, its helplessness, because he was actually focusing on wounds, the concept of wounds. Human wounds, animal wounds, wound, wound hota hai. Isko lagta hai ya mujhe lagta hai, ek hi baat hai. That concept of the wound is what he is trying to express. Similarly, you take one of the great artists of India, D.P. Roy Chaudhary, and how he's depicted a dog feeding her children. You look at the concept here of this is nothing to do with the dog, but it's the relationship between drawings and sculpture. A great artist like Dhanraj Bhagat. Then these are two examples of one of India's greatest printmakers, Krishna Reddy, who from 1955 to about 1968 created some of the most unique innovative intaglios of the world where natural forms were the inspiration. So spider's web, jellyfish, germination, whirlpool, tree trunk, blossoming, um, uh, the wave, pastoral, all these kinds of natural organic forms he expressed through very unique intaglios. Then you've got artists like Jyoti Bhatt who tried to revive the craft traditions in the fine arts and also take forward certain aspects of it. I put because are animals so I Jyoti Munuswami, again, another great artist who used the line to create a sense of Indianness. In the 60s, in Chola Mandal and South India, great artists like Panikkar, Ramanunjam, Sultan Ali, Munuswami, Bhaskaran, Vasudev, many others, were trying to experiment that how can we be modern and Indian and uniquely ourselves. So these experiments in the Western concept, the line is always usually an outline. It's an outline to something else to focus on. But in Indian philosophy, the line is an imaginary joy in itself. I don't need the line to be an outline. The line itself is the beauty because it comes from the inner world. That's the difference between those two worlds. One represented the outside material world. One represented the inner movement of one's idealism. And that difference is what became the East-West um, dialogue to a large extent. And these great paintings of uh, Sultan Ali, the Pramanu Darshan series, one of the unique attempts of using folk and tribal symbolism to express modern, uh, modernism in Indian art. Then we have another great tradition in India, and that is of the book tradition. So the book tradition has an old tradition from Abhindranath Tagore, Hussain, Satyajit Ray, um, Ganesh Pine, K.G. Subramaniam, all the way to the younger generation of Namita Bachchan, where her recent book, Full Circle, or her um, lovely illustrated book of her grandfather's poetry, Harivai Bachchan in Madhushala, Beautiful artworks, part of the tradition of bookmaking and book illustration. 
So that, and there's some original artworks from those books. And so this is another section which we are also taken forward. Now, obviously, part of our film section, we have thousands of archives, and we've chosen to just give one example of probably India's most celebrated and greatest film director in many ways, Satyajit Ray. So every kind of book, journal, magazine, letter, document, uh, booklets on him, everything is, for the first time, will really be available to the public um, on a grand scale, integrated within the framework of India studies. This great um, Devi poster, which was for the French release of Devi, when it was shown in France for the first time. And it's very strange. Yesterday, a day before, uh, Victor Banerjee was here at the opening, and he mentioned that the lady who played Durga in Devi actually died day before yesterday. So, you know, it's ironic of all the posters we chose, God bless her soul, but the fact is that, you know, there's thousands of stories every day. You can't focus on every one. So, Satyajit Ray's work in stills by Nimai Ghosh, the great poster, look at Kabuliwala's poster, look at the design. This was Tapan Sinha's uh, Kabuliwala and Vitek Gatak's uh, poster. So, the Bengali poster had a unique design sensibility because they used the font of the text like an artwork, which most Hindi film posters or South Indian film posters did not do. So that's why Bengali film posters are a bit more um, beautiful and aesthetically pleasing and graphically exciting because they use the font image dialogue, Jugal Bandi, in a better way. All right? Take, for example, uh, the whole journey of India's struggle to be herself, to create an India Studies conceptual framework, is from the 1880s to the 2020s. Now, all 6,000 years of India lives in 140 years. So we have always this violent, non-violent dilemma in all civilizations. India took it to an extreme because of one individual, passionate individ um, you know, thinker. And that was Gandhiji. But at the same time, when you struggle against uh, uh, foreign power, violence is the norm of most ways. Now, Gandhiji, people think they understand. Our objective is to show, no, you don't. There are many ways to look at even the most established icons of our century. You look at him from here. Now, if you see something like this, most people don't get it because in the 1870s, 80s, Hindu mythology was shown in the Calcutta presses in Bengal from Kansari Pava, Chor Bagan, Calcutta Art Studio. Look at that. Yamma, Shiva, Makhandaya. Then Ravi Varma Press came along. People started copying the Ravi Varma Press. And then you see how political propaganda uses myth, uses religion to bring about a relationship and communication with the people. So Gandhiji becomes Shiva, the British Empire becomes Yam, and Makhandaya becomes Bharat Mata. Now, this relationship between the secular and the religious and the struggle for one's identity is always entwined in India. You can't separate it honestly. You can try your best and it doesn't matter whether it's the most secular-minded person or whether it's someone who has another version. So these things need to be questioned. Everything needs to be re-examined. How do I understand it? How do I make these decisions? How do I know what is the underlying processes? So when you look at a Gandhiji, you've got one perspective. You look at Gandhiji here, Polish poster of Attenborough's film. You look at a young interpretation by an artist in 2007. You look at these. These are the original first photographs by Cartier Bresson, Last Days of Gandhiji. Nehru announcing Gandhiji's death, the public at the procession of his um, body being taken to the streets, Gandhi's last um, visit to Nizamuddin, then you look, his visit with 
Rabindranath Tagore, Gandhiji at Dandi. And then you see the whole evolution of a different kind of struggle for independence. When you're also, the frustration of the youth is there. I want independence now. I want to kill my enemy. I want to get them out. So violence is the way you take forward. So Bhagat Singh, Chandrasekhar Zaz, Subhash Chandra Bose, these are the main icons which took forward that. And how our political propaganda showed it of that time. And you take great artists like Chitto Prasad, one of the greatest artists of India, man of total integrity. And how the first time the arts tried to play a role in fighting for against injustice, whether it was the Bengal famine of 1942, when K.A. Abbas and others were trying to raise money. So they set up IPTA. And IPTA became one of the great cultural institutions of India in trying to take from the masses, from the people, and giving them a political sensibility, giving them a sense of duty as citizens, as people who are under British rule. And that whole journey, so most people know about Quit India, they don't know about Quit Asia. What was the Quit Asia movement? Because at that same time, the Japanese were also bombing India, especially Chittagong. And the British wanted to fight the Japanese because they were part of the powers with Germany. So all the politics of the time is still not clearly understood. And the visual image is a much deeper way to tackle these issues than the written word. The written word is deeply distorted. It's already gone through so many interpretations. The visual image is still fresh. Therefore, the prejudice, the preconceptions are less when you open up an educational framework. And that's what this is about. How do you create the first detailed, world-class, conceptual framework for India studies? How do you reach out to all the universities and schools of the world and say, there's not one course, imagine, not one course in the whole world for India studies as a three-year graduate course. Now, why? Because we've never collected a world-class archive. We've never understood the relationship between the image and the text meaningfully. We've brought so many prejudices and preconceptions to the interpretation of India. You can't decide what you want to show about India. She tells you. She tells you the scale. She tells you the complexity of the diversity. You can't pick and choose what you want to tell. You never solve the problem then. So the whole point is, unless you lay it all out in the most grand, neutral, passionate manner, and you need both. You need great objectivity and you need deep passion for being as fair as possible. So you take a simple, look at, imagine this, one simple two ana lithograph. And in that is the whole history of the um, Congress movement on one way. Every personality of importance, their proximity to Gandhiji, left or right, above or below, were they related to this, were they related to that. In one simple lithograph, much more exciting for the students to understand this than to be read in boring books with words and words and words. So that energy, today, education is facing that problem. It's always faced that problem. How do you excite and inspire the youth? It's not simply, you, don't, you can't teach anymore. You have to lead them to a self-discovery. You have to lead them to an inner sense of awareness. How someone's identity is molded is the choice of the individual. That choice can only be fulfilled if self-discovery is the main mode of education rather than teaching or even learning or even the more fashionable word, mentoring. What is mentoring or learning? You have to give them a vision. You have to give them guidance. You have to give them all the raw materials. You can't just tell them something. So the heart of our educational problem today is this lack of access to the great, meaningful visual documents 
that make the last 200 years of India. That's what we are trying to now give. So this is one small part, part one. Now you take part two. Now we, from here we can go in two directions. You come here and see this way. Okay? So when you come from there, you have two ways of looking at it. You can look at one way is to see it from the point of travel. Let them also be. They're part of the audience. No? Okay. See from there, please. Okay. They are part of the travel, or you can go deeper into the political responsibilities, the social responsibilities of the creative mind. So let's say we take this path and we come to how you discover India. How did India want herself to be understood? It's a very important way that how did we come to know what is India? Who is she? How do we study her? How do we explore her? How do we visit her? Where do we place the emphasis? What do we ignore? What do we not ignore? So all throughout first travel was basically about pilgrimage. We would go to a Palitana, we would go to a Budgaya, we would go to a Nalanda, we would go to a Banaras, we would go to uh, Brameshwaram, we would go to Palni, Tiruvallai, lots of places, Sharangam, that's there. So, the whole concept of pilgrimage, and then pilgrimage suddenly gets a boost when the first railways come about. So, because of railways, you can travel further, and because of that, you want to promote Aye, Shivangam ke paas aye, ya Alabad aye, ya Banaras aye, ya Mathara aye. So, these posters were created by a great artist called M.V. Durandar. So, these are the first posters created in India to facilitate travel. And you notice that in the 1920s, it is going to the holy sites. And in this case, is, I've given you Shivangam, but I can only show in this exhibition one, one sample of the thousands that we have built up. So, you have on, as I said, Matra, you have on Alabad, you have on Palni, you have on Vermeshulam, Tiruvannamalai, and so on. Okay? Then you had the other way of looking at India. She was part of the Orient. So, um, the Orient had, obviously today it's seen with a great kind of prejudice because of certain perspectives of post-colonial studies. Edward Said's Orientalism in 78 changed that perspective to a large extent. And as a result, you can see the kind of design tropes that are used. So you can see the turban, you can see the Chinese and the Japanese haircuts, you can see the elephant, you can see the Vietnamese topi, you can see other parts. So even though this is a great piece of design, we bring our post-colonial attitude that it's about Orientalism. And as a result, we undermine it as a piece of graphic design and as a piece of history. It's part of the journey. Whether you agree, disagree, is neither here nor there. Respect it as part of one piece of the jigsaw. Contextualize it with another piece. Look at it here. Here's another example. Now, they started choosing particular monuments. So in this case, it's Chattamanzir. It could be Budgaya. It could be so many other monuments that were chosen um, in Jaipur, in Udaipur, in hundreds of parts of India. Now, you see how a post is designed. And you look here. And you see the actual photograph from which a poster is taken, its designs. So these uh, original photographs, in this case by V. Pont. Why are you so? Why are you so? Let it be. Whether it is the pilgrimage framework, whether it is the concept of the Orient, whether it is using the monument as the focus, or in this case, you can actually s interpret what are they trying to present about India. Look at the monuments chosen. Look at the way they are presented as a design facet. You've got the Taj Mahal, you've got the Kutub Minar, you've got Bulan Darwaza. So you've got three traditionally coming from an Indian Islamic background. You've got Shravan Bagola, Indian Jain background. You've got Sanchi, Indian Buddhist background. And in the corner, you have Jodhpur Fort. So, and a Hindu background. 
So you are creating an idea of India where you want to represent a secularism, but that secularism is so biased that it creates the kind of issues we are facing today. And if you understood that when you express any idea, the point is to do it fairly. When you compensate excessively, when you try to give positive discrimination, when you try to, and that's also understandable in many ways, because the majority always tries to protect the minority. And that's only as long as the majority is humble, the majority understands that there will be other facets which you can't talk about. But this was the kind of secularism which is depicted in this poster. So you, what this is trying to say is that the visual speaks at many levels if you know how to interpret it. But because we haven't learnt the way to interpret the visual, we are facing the problem where everything is text, everything demands. For example, people complain, why no captions? And no captions because we want you to look at the visual. There may be other practical reasons there's no captions. But the bottom line is, for 10 years, I've never worried about captions. Okay, I hand it over to someone else to do, knowing that basically most of them will never do it properly. Because the image is not being read by the public. And therefore, the image and the visual is not part of our educational system in any meaningful way as a source of knowledge. It simply is a complement to the text. And that's one of the biggest problems facing education and academia. And this exhibition is showing that that can change radically. Discovery via Rediscovering India is 30 years journey in creating the first Pella structure, framework for India studies. Sari dunia mein, abhi tak, ek teen saal ka undergraduate course India studies ke liye nahi hai. So hum teen saal se koshish kar rahe ki waisa platform banaya jaye, kaise banaya jaye, from the arts, cinema, architecture, political sciences, social sciences, all the visual arts, usme wo jo energy hai, up, they call, whether it's a film poster, whether it's the fine arts of great artists, whether it's political propaganda, whether it's travel posters, whether it's architectural monuments, whether it's to do with science fiction, mystery. We've created a unique framework. And now to make this framework open to all the universities and colleges and schools, mm -hmm. this exhibition, pella exhibition, which the khawa dunya ko ki dekhiye. India is cheez hai ki aap you can't take out what you like. It's like the greatest pickle in the world. Jaise nimbu or coriander or turnip or shalgam or sab ek saath jua rehta hai. Aapko pata nahi ki kaise inka swabhav badalta hai. Dhoop kaise lagti hai. Ek ka juice dousse pe kaise asar hota hai. Ye jo pura tarika hai Hindustan, India ko banane ke liye humare arts, humare cinemas, Inko samasne ke liye koi system nahi hai. Hamare colleges mein, schools mein, universities mein. Or baad desh ke log aate hai or samasne hai, wo bhi apne alag alag preconceptions ke saath aate hai. To ye exhibition usko sab ulta kar deta hai. Ki dekhiye, kya kya hai? Inka dialogue kaise chalta hai? What's the relationship between a golden jubilee award and a poster, a poster and an artwork, an artwork and a book, a journal, a magazine, the dialogues, the discourses, the political events, the history. Our subsidiary bimari hamare desh mein ye hai ki aadmi aur jab image ko dekhta hai, wo sochte ki shabdo ke saath iska explanation hona chahiye. Nahi, image apna knowledge hai, isko panne ke liye wo shiksha hume diya nahi gaya. It's got form, hair, composition, hair, line, hair, color, hair, texture, hair. It's got some is nickelie, schools ne koi jada koshish ne kia. It's li aaj hamare no javan log or um, even the older age people. They don't know how to read an image. Exhibition me bolte log caption DJ. Caption Q de. Aapko pata hai kya bol raha hai. Aapne aap nazar aata hai. Aapne nazar aata hai to koshish ki jay samjne ke liye. 
जस्ट पोजिशनिंग देखो इसके पहले क्या हुआ इसके बाद में क्या हुआ इसके दाई को क्या हुआ इसके बाई को क्या हुआ वॉट्स द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन मनोज कुमार एंड दिलीप कुमार वॉट्स द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन दिलीप कुमार एंड इंडियन सिनेमा रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन इंडियन सिनेमा एंड फिल्म फेस्टिवल फिल्म फेस्टिवल एंड जुबली ट्रॉफी जुबली ट्रॉफी एंड बॉक्स ऑफिस बॉक्स ऑफिस एंड एंटरटेनमेंट एंटरटेनमेंट एंड लाइफ स्टाइल लाइफ स्टाइल एंड लेजर लेजर एंड एजुकेशन ये सब एक बिल्कुल जुड़ा हुआ है लेकिन हमारा इकोनॉमिक एजुकेशनल सिस्टम इसको तोड़ के समझाते हैं हमें और ये तोड़ने में सारा जो रस होता है निकल जाता है दैट इज वाई आइडलिज्म टू डे इज एट द बैक फुट आइडलिज्म जो आइडिया लेता है जिसके दिमाग से आइडिया निकलता है वो सोचते कि हम कुछ नहीं कर सकते अब आइडिया किसी और को दे देते हैं उनको इम्प्लीमेंट करने दो बिजनेस को दे देते हैं गवर्नमेंट को दे देते हैं फिलानथ्रोपी को दे देते हैं और फिर रोते हैं कि यार हमारा आइडिया कुछ और बन गया है क्यों बन गया है क्योंकि आपने किसी और को दे दिया है यू थिंक अबाउट इट कोई ऐसा मौका नहीं है देश में जहाँ म्यूजिक नहीं बज रहा हो लेकिन यूट्यूब ने स्ट्राइक करना है अब आप अपने आप सोच कितने दिन का है क्या क्या लोगों को देखने को मिलेगा यहाँ पर यहाँ पंद्रह दिन का एग्जीबिशन है फॉर्म आप आगे पहले जब आते हो फॉर्म एटीन एटीज टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटीज एक सौ चालीस साल की इंडिया का इतिहास आर्ट से सिनेमा से आर्किटेक्चर से स्कॉलरशिप से द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन एनिमल ह्यूमन नेचर एंड द कॉस्मॉस ये जो हिमालय के रिश्ता क्या है हमारे साथ कश्मीर का रिश्ता क्या है इन सारे चीज़ों का आज से कैसे लोगों को समझ आती है ये एग्जीबिशन का मकसद है बेटा कुछ बताइएगा जो ये बड़ा पोस्टर है यहाँ पर उसके बारे ये में ये ये यूनिक एक्सपेरिमेंट था इंडियन सिनेमा में मनोज कुमार ऐसे व्यक्ति थे जो हर पार्ट ऑफ फिल्म मेकिंग में अपना हाथ डालते थे इन डायरेक्शन प्रोडक्शन एडिटिंग स्क्रीन प्ले म्यूजिक पब्लिसिटी मटीरियल और उन्होंने एक आइडिया था कि क्रांति के रिलीज के पहले हम एक महान कोई आर्टवर्क बनाए दैट कैन गो टू द मेन मेट्रोज इन बॉम्बे बैंगलोर दिल्ली कैलकाटा मद्रास इसमें कोई नाम ना हो क्रांति का नाम नहीं है मनोज कुमार का नाम नो ब्रांड इन खाली आर्ट तो पंडित राम शर्मा राम कुमार शर्मा को उन्होंने बोला कि आप ये पोस्टर बनाइए ट्वेल्थ शीटर है तो ये ट्वेल्थ शीटर गया था अब बिल्कुल एक दो कॉपीज हो गए दुनिया में और इस शोज वो पीरियड था जहाँ आर्ट और सिनेमा का मिलन आखिर आखिर स्टेज पे था जैसे आप बात देखो गंगा जमुना को देखो ओरिजिनल आर्ट वर्क यहूदी का देख लो दायरा का देख लो अंदाज का देख लो मेरा नाम जोकर का देख लो उस जमाने में आर्ट और सिनेमा का ज़्यादा मिलन था अब इसके बाद लास्ट आप बात देख लो मंगल पांडे उसके बाद बिल्कुल ये हैंड पेंटेड पब्लिसिटी मटेरियल स्टॉक्ड ओके सर ये जानना है मुझे आपने ये ये ट्वेल्थ शीटर पोस्टर है ना शायद एक ही है एक तो ये नहीं बोल सकते एक दो और हो सकते हैं दुनिया में हमें पता नहीं क्रांति का एक ही फिल्म का बारह शीटर पोस्टर है ना और कोई नहीं बारह शीटर पोस्टर्स मे बी सेपरेट दिस इज अ प्री रिलीज विदाउट द ब्रांड इन ऑफ द फिल्म That's different. That's only that one. That is unique. That's only one like that. We've only known of this experiment. No other film experimented like this, because as I said, this decision is only possible when. See, apart from Raj Kapoor and Manoj Kumar, there were very few other directors who were also producers who were also like involved in all parts of making the film. So Manoj Kumar had that control. Raj Kapoor had that control. There were few others. so unless you have full control you can't do certain things also that is you know that's another part of the way things are built in life sir ye aapko kahan se mila ye poster baba aap ye kranti ke poster ke upar kyu itne sawal okay about junoon mughal e azam and few others see junoon is a very unique these are the quads ek hi cinema group the duniya mein the curzon cinema in england and they had the great designer called peter strausfeld and peter strausfeld designed a particular kind of quad so whether it was junoon jalsagar whether it was films from poland films from denmark films from any other part of the world france when they showed in england 
This was the unique design sensibility. So, see, in this exhibition, I can only give you one sample. There are thousands to show. Wo internet mein hoga jab research center khulega. Abhi ke liye mein aapko ek hi disha dekha sakta ho ki aisa sample hai. To Junoon ko aap dek sakte ho, fir aap Google kar sakte ho Peter Straussfeld, Curzon Cinema, Quads in British Cinema, and you learn more. And what about Mughal Azam, sir? Mughal Azam is a famous. हमने बहुत बार इसको पहले जमाने में ऑक्शन भी किया था. अब ये हमने अपने आर्काइव के लिए लिया था. This is there is no film like Mughal Azam. Not just the film itself. उसका बनाने का पूरा तरीका. एक बंदा के आसिफ. If you notice, पंद्रह साल उसको लगे. He took the first cover of Film India in 1945 when Chandra Mohan and Nargis were the stars. पंद्रह साल के बाद उसने दस कवर्स लिए, वो जो जुनून और पैशन उसमें था, और दैट्स व्हाई फॉर आस के आसिफ इज एन इम्पोर्टेंट फैक्टर, बिकॉज़ हर हिंदुस्तानी, हर इंडियन में एक मुगले आजम बैठा हुआ है, लेकिन वो मुगले आजम को निकालने के लिए जो स्टैमिना, लव, पैशन, मनी, ऑपरेशनिटी, एनर्जीज तो वो सपोर्ट हम कोशिश करेंगे कि ये रिसर्च सेंटर से थोड़ा सा सपोर्ट मिले कि हर आदमी का मुगले आजम